Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got something a little bit different today. We're gonna to learn how to play Maniac by Michael Cimbello. So this is my own kind of guitar arrangement of it. It's got that keyboard riff in it that I, works really well on guitar. It just sounds killer. And it's a lot of fun to play. So we're gonna go through the whole song, including an actual great guitar solo that's in this song by Michael Cimbello. So there's some really cool actual guitar stuff to do. But then we have uh, a lot of kind of keyboard arrangements um, that we can really rock up as well too. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell so you know release a new video. Uh, so you can like, you know, like and comment on my videos and help me out a little bit on the YouTube algorithm game. Um, and if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, please join my Guitar Academy. It's the best way to support anything I do online. You'll see a link to it in the description below. Uh, that link will give you a free seven day trial to my Academy. And the Academy contains all my guitar courses containing complete courses and for beginner stuff to more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, you name it. So please go check it out and you get personalized support from me uh, if you're a member. All right, so let's jump into this song. I'm in standard tuning here and we're taking this opening uh, keyboard riff um, this is one of the funner songs I used to play live when I was in like in this kind of 80s cover band in Vegas. Um, and people really dug this kind of rock version of it. So we have this opening keyboard um, riff, um, but underneath that we have some chords that are supporting it. So if you have a couple guitar players, it'd be great to have one doing these power chords underneath it, underneath this keyboard riff. So those chords real quick would be like this. So it's just the power chord off the uh, second fret of the A string. Then move it up to the fourth fret. And then six. So that goes underneath the keyboard. Kind of thing like that. All right, so with the keyboard riff itself, we're gonna start here at the, uh, the uh, seventh fret on the B string, and then fourth on the G. Now, we're gonna keep going back to this fourth fret there on the G between each note, pretty much. And we have a melody that we're gonna be doing on the B string. And we're gonna keep coming back to this note on the G in between each one. So we have this. Seven on the B, then to that uh, four on the G, then six on the G, I mean, I'll show you the B string, and then back to the four on the G, so we have this. So I like to kind of, especially palm mute that one. You can palm mute both, but at least palm mute the G. It really helps it pop out and give it a little bit of a power to it. So we're just going back and forth between that seven and six on the B and keep going back to the G. So you do it a couple times. And then we're just going to change the note that we're playing on the G string. So we're going to move this up to a si the sixth fret there. And you still do that seven, six on the B, but remember, going back to this note, uh, this string between each note. See, I'm still going back to that G string, so we have this. So. So this next one, we're gonna go all the way back to the third fret here. So it's a little bit of a stretch. We're gonna be the third fret on the G, and that's the note we're gonna keep going back to. And we have that, still the same melody. Seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. And then we're gonna end it by going down to four on the B string. And we keep going to the G string in between each note, each melody note, and then back to six. So we're this. All together. And repeat. Alright, and now we get to the uh, verse. Now the verse uses some really interesting chords. Um, a lot of those we can get pretty close to on the guitar. They're obviously like keyboard voicings. Um, but uh, some of them I'll do kind of slight approximations just to make it 
a little bit easier to play and not doing quite as uh, complex chord voicing, uh, but I think it still works. So it looks like this. All right, so the, the progression here is gonna, I'll just take you through these chords. We have the sixth fret on the A, nine on the D, eight on the G, seven on the B. So it's an interesting chord just to start with. And then we're gonna move up this note on the D string up a half step to the 10th fret and leave all the other ones there. So there's a little chromatic line that he's moving up. And then he goes to this minor seventh thing. So we're just um, barring across the sixth fret now. And we have the eighth fret on the D and um, seventh on the B. So I'm just really kind of strumming the four middle strings here. So we have and then it's kind of minor major seventh thing which we have um, that's going to be the six on the A, eight on the D, seven on the G, and seven on the B string. So all right, so this next score is where we start getting to like really kind of an approximation. So the ninth fret here on the D, tenth on the G, seven on the B, and nine on the high E. I thought that chord worked really well for that harmony there. You might want to do this little bit of our wall with it too. And then I'm going to bar the ninth fret across the top four strings along with the tenth fret on the G string in front of it. So that chord kind of resolves that. And now here at the end of this riff, we're, uh, we're going to go to a B sus2 chord. Now the harmony there has got a little bit more going on with it, but just to make it easy and playable on the guitar. The real important there is that C sharp. So, so I'm just doing a bar at the second fret and um, across five strings, and I have the fourth fret on D, four on G in front of it. So you're gonna have that second fret on the B string. But I kind of usually pick across it, like you saw when I performed this section. And then we're gonna end it with. So we have this. Uh, we're going to hold this B flat in the bass over both of these. So we're going to have a third fret there on the G, fourth on the B, second on the high E, and then play the first fret there on the, in the bass there on the A string. So you can hybrid pick this, or if you can mute uh, that D string, pick across it. And then resolve that to a B flat major chord, which is just a full bar now uh, across the uh, first fret there, and I'm um, just strumming across from the fifth string, but I have the third fret on the D, G, and the B. So I'm just going, and then you just repeat, same chords. So pretty challenging part, trying to translate these keyboards to a guitar. All right, and then it gets easier again. We're going to jump back into some riffs. Uh, this pre-chorus, once again, has some chords underneath it that look like this. They... There's a keyboard riff over that too, which we'll, we'll cover in a second. So it's just a power chord off the, four, the, uh, the low E string here at the fourth fret. Then move it up to six. Then move it to seven. And back down to six. Now the guitar riff over that, or the keyboard riff that we're gonna play on guitar looks like this.
So I'm playing, I keep going back to the seventh fret on the B. So we're gonna start there, and then I'm gonna go to the uh, fifth fret there on the G string. And now you'll notice when I go to the, the, the second melody note each time, I'm adding some really rapid, quick vibrato on, or, or even maybe a kind of a quick bend and release. It just gives it a little bit of a flavor, you know? Uh, just kind of makes it sound closer to what's going on on the keyboard. So it's, it kind of sounds dull. Like, you, know, you know what I mean? So it's, do it if you want. So we have seven on the B, five on the G. Do it like three times, and then you're gonna go seven on the B uh, and four on the G. So this. All right, and then we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're gonna instead the note on the G string here for the most part is gonna be the seventh fret. So go back to the seven on the B. So we're going seven on the B, seven on the G three times, and then once again the fourth time. We do go to the fourth fret on the G, so we keep ending it at that fourth fret on the G. So we have this. All right, and now we're going to go seven on the B, and the second melody note is going to be the fourth fret on the B strings. So we have this. And once again here, three times. And then that last note, the fourth time, will be that fourth fret there on the G. So it's... So, so far. And then we're going to end this part by going... Which is just 7-4, seven, 7-4 four, seven, four on the B. And then resolve it to the seventh fret on the G, and that leads us back into the uh, the chorus. Now the chorus is pretty much the same we did it in the um, in the intro. That, so we basically repeated the riff four times, and we just kind of extended that ending. And the chords underneath it kind of correspond with that. So you do that like basically three times. Now this last time, the last chord is going to be different. Just move over, instead of going up to these, this E flat here, go over to the A flat, that's the fourth fret on the low E string, that power chord. And that's what you hold while you're doing that kind of extended ending. Just. All right, and then we get to the same verse again, same pre-chorus, same chorus. Uh, but we do get this really cool little bridge riff that happens. Um, sounds great when you have a bass player playing in an octave lower with you. Uh, but here's what that part sounds like. leads us into the solo. So this riff right here, we're going to start at, um, I'm kind of doing it with all downstrokes, so I can really get those really nice heavily palm muted line when you're, we're moving around. So we have four on the D, then three. And then we do this ascending scale run. We're going to go four, six on the A, 
And then four, three, four, six on the uh, on the D. So three, four, six. So this. All right. Then over to the third fret on the G, and then back down to that six on the D. So we have this. All right. So we have this. And then we're gonna go three on the D string over to six on the A. And then to end the riff, we're gonna go back on that six on the A, back to that three on the D. So the whole riff is this. And then you just repeat that four times. Well, you repeat it three times. You play it four times total. Uh, but it's a really cool riff as soon as you get it up to underneath your fingers. It's, it feels really nice. It's one of those things that feels good to play. All right, then we have the solo. Now, the solo is great, uh, by, played by Michael Cimbello. Um, so I'm going to play through that solo. Now, in case you're wondering, this, the solo is over the verse chords. Um, so if you have your uh, rhythm guitar player, make him play that that which is you know not easy <laughs> it's, it's probably harder than the solo itself uh anyway so i'm going to play through the solo for you real quick and i'll show you how to play it note for note so here we go So, very, very cool stuff. All right, so that first phrase looks like this. So that's just the uh, 15th fret of the G string, and then a whole step in at the 16 on the B. Release that bend, and then back to the 15 on the G. Do this. All right, and then we start the next phrase pretty much the same way. So that starts with that same 15 on the G, into that bend at the 16th fret on the B string again. But then you're going to pick it as it's bent, release, pull off to 14. And then over to 16 on the high E string, a whole step in. And then a whole step in again with a release. So pull off to the 14 now. Over to 16 on the B string twice. And then you go back to the 14 on the high E and put a slight little bend it real quick and then kill it. So we have this. All right, next phrase. So that's going to start with a pull off from 14 to 11 on the B. And then you're going to go back to 14 a couple times. Pick it a couple times. And then pick 11. So we have this. So you can pull off to that 11 the second time too. And then we have the, a bend at the 13th fret on the G string. Kind of a bend and release. Then you can play 11, 13 on the G. Over to 11 on the B. Back, roll over back to 11 on the G. And then you're going to end it with a slow bend at the 13th fret there on the uh, G string. So we have this. All right, then a really cool part happens here where this little tapping sequence looks like this. All 
All right, so what's going on with this tapping thing? It's kind of an interesting lick that he's doing. Um, first, he's tapping, you're gonna start tapping here at the 12th fret on the B. So you'll tap there, and initially, so you're just gonna pull off to six. And, and he's gonna hammer on to seven. So he's got this little half step. So it gives it kind of a haunting quality to the lick, this little half step to heaven. So what's really cool about the lick is he taps, pulls off to six, hammers on a half step up on seven. Then, so it's a three note lick there, right? Then he taps again, but instead of pulling off to six, he pulls off to seven, which is already there, and then pulls off to six. So it's like, so it starts as a, um, a hammer on from six to seven, and the second time, it's a pull off from six to seven. So we have this tap, Six, seven, tap, seven, six. So he just repeats that. So I would suggest just working on that because the timing is a little bit odd initially. And then once you've got that, the timing of that down, uh, so it's basically a six note pattern total. And then repeat. And once you've got that down, then you just start moving the tapping notes up chromatically from 12, 13, 14, 15. And that's all that's going on there. Kind of, it's a very cool little interesting sounding tapping lick. And we have this. So I kind of go up from that last tap. I kind of just, that last tap, I just pull off to the seven. And it gives me time to get my pick back in my uh, hand correctly. So I'm doing that bend in that on the seventh fret there on the B string. And then kind of pick it again and bend and release. And then go eight, six, Eight six eight on the G string, and then quickly grab the f seventh fret on the high E string real quick and kill it. And then you end it with this last phrase. So that's a bend at the uh, ninth fret there on the G. I'm sorry, the B string. Release down to seven, and then back to that nine and a slow bend on it. All right, so that is it for the solo. And then we go back to basically the uh, pre-chorus again. And then the same chorus that we did before, but it's kind of yeah, obviously extended. It's kind of the last chorus of the song. I'm not really gonna cover, there is a fill that happens there at the very beginning. Which is that bend to the 19th fret on the B. And then play 1916 on the B. But then from there, it's really just the chorus riff that's going, and there's some out. So I know there's a little outro guitar solo licks going on there, but I actually think it's more fun to just play the um, the the riff. And I think if you play this for an audience, you'll find that just playing, just digging into that riff is the funnest part of it. All right, so, and that's about it for the song. It's a great song, works out well, pretty, uh, uh, pretty well on the guitar, and it's got a great guitar solo anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.